you need to classify your MHSPC patients into four broad categories. This is the NCCN guidelines. If you look at NCCN, there's a two by two table. You categorize every patient by volume of disease. So that's low versus high using the charted definition. And then you classify every patient by whether they have de novo metastatic prostate cancer, meaning the metastases were there from the beginning of diagnosis, or whether it's metachronous, meaning they had their primary therapy to the, to the prostate sometime before. And if you categorize these patients by that two by two metric, you end up with three categories. The high risk category is high volume de novo metastatic disease. Low risk is low volume metachronous disease. And in the middle, you have low volume de novo and high volume met, uh, metachronous. The reason we can stratify these is if you look at all the trials and you look at the ADT monotherapy arm, okay? For low risk patients, median OS with ADT monotherapy is eight years. For high-risk patients, median OS with ADT monotherapy is three years. And for intermediate risk, it's about five years. This really helps based on easy clinical criteria up front. Who's high risk, who's low risk, right? Alan, along with this two by two table, are you also using NGS to look for TP53 or RB loss uh, in your clinical yeah. practice to dictate that? So that is not yet standard of care. And I've published on this. We really helped popularize this early on. There's a paper by my then fellow, Miguel Velev Tellez, who published our experience with genomic markers. No surprise, right? B53 mutations are bad. Yes. RB loss is bad, just like in every other cancer. These are absolutely prognostic. Outcomes are worse, okay? To the extent that they're potentially predictive by saying choose one strategy over another, that's debatable but they are absolutely prognostic. Men who have loss of tumor suppressor genes belong in the higher risk category. Yes. If you look at the two by two table, if you look at our living meta-analysis, because we compared all these categories across the various trials, in the high risk patients, triplet therapy gives the best outcome. In the low risk patients, doublet therapy gives the best outcome. Triplet doesn't help. In the intermediate risk, it's a little bit of dealer's choice, right? But I would say in general, I'm doing doublet. But getting back to your question, intermediate risk with tumor suppressor gene loss, I do triplet. 